glutamate the neurotransmitter the glutamate is the body's most prominent neurotransmitter it is the brain's main excitatory neurotransmitter the glutamate receptors are found at postsynaptic sites so what is an excitatory neurotransmitter an excitatory neurotransmitter is one which opens the sodium channels so the sodium influx into the cell occur causing depolarization of the neuron normally the cell in a polarized state with positive outside and negative inside the other neurotransmitter acetylcholine and dopamine and others too glutamate is also the precursor of GABA GABA is the brain's main inhibitory neurotransmitter the other main inhibitory neurotransmitter is glycine and that is mainly found in the spinal cord the glutamate receptors are responsible for many functions and they are important for neuronal communication memory and learning they are found on the dendrites of the postsynaptic cells but they are also present on astrocytes and oligodendrocytes there are two types of glutamate receptors inotropes and metabotropes the inotrop receptors are ligand gated non selective channel that allows the flow of different ions the inotropic receptors are three types nmda n methyl d aspartate number 2 ampa alpha methyl propionic acid and kinate the nmda receptors with them five ions are involved two monovalent valent cations two divalent cations and one monovalent anion chloride the monovalent cations are sodium potassium divalent cations are calcium and magnesium and monovalent anion is chloride which acts as agonist the magnesium is the blocker natural blocker of the nmda receptor so the nmda receptors have an internal blocking side magnesium blocks just like a guard sitting on the gate and not allowing anybody to go inside the passage of ion through the nmda receptor does not occur until this magnesium ion block is removed so when in the beginning it is the ampa receptor that decreases the polarized state and when it the it reaches to a certain level it removes or displaces the magnesium ion from blocking the nmda receptor so nmda receptor needs the help of ampa receptor to start with and then once the calcium is removed the flow of ions through the nmda channel occur sodium and potassium and also the calcium ion it pass into the cell causing the depolarization the flow of calcium through these receptors it causes the long term potentiation the metabotropic glutamate receptor the metabotropic receptors are the g protein coupled re receptor that evoke a cascade of events that leads to the generation of action potential there are three types they may be extracellular transmembranous or maybe intracellular so 
the glutamate receptors are they only present in the CNS or outside the CNS also yes they are also present outside the CNS they are present in the cardiac tissues the ionotropic glutamate receptors and they are also present in the pancreatic islets and inducing the secretion of uh, modulate the secretion of insulin and glucagon they are also present in the sensory nerve terminal in the skin so what is excitotoxicity caused by glutamate it is the overstimulation by the glutamate that causes the cell death because uh, remember that it's a calcium ion, a influx of calcium that causes long term potentiation that leads to overstimulation and cell death. High calcium con concentrations activate a cascade of cell degradation processes and that what does it involve? It involves many enzymes including the nitric oxide synthase. The nitric oxide synthase increases the nitric oxide oxide and high nitric oxide concentration damage mitochondria so if the mitochondria are damaged there is no energy production or energy production is depleted and that leads to the oxidative stress to the neuron the accidental ingestion of the glutamate agonist like example is domoic acid or exposure to exc excited toxin that act on glutamate receptor can induce excitotoxicity and cause toxic effects on the central nervous system. The traumatic brain injury or cerebral ischemia as occurred in cerebral infarction and hemorrhage can also cause neurode neurodegeneration. What happens that hypoxia and hypoglycemia triggers a bioenergetic failure in which mitochondria stops producing ATP. Once the ATP is depleted, the sodium potassium ATPase can no longer maintain the sodium potassium concentration across the cell membrane. Sodium pump stops and the sodium influx into the cell occurs. Number two, in addition, the cell death via lysis or apoptosis releases the cytoplasmic glutamate outside of the rupture cell, then that stimulates the other neurons in the area and increases that there's increase of the glutamate concentration. And number three antigen-antibody reaction in the glutamate receptors may cause a Rossmann encephalitis and a non-familial olivopentocerebellar degeneration. And uh, number four, uh, magnesium. Uh, a magnesium deficiency may also cause um, excited, excitotoxic cell damage because magnesium you know is the natural blocker or antagonist to the NMDA receptor so any deficiency of magnesium may cause excitotoxicity. The glutamate receptors have been found or influence the ischemia, stroke, diabetes, Parkinson disease, Huntington disease and in aching conditions. It may be all it may be also involved in schizophrenia and glutamate receptor antagonist memantine is a potential treatment for schizophrenia memantine is a non-selective NMDA receptor antagonist the neurotransmitters in seizures a seizure is an abnormal is due to an abnormal electrical discharge from a neuron which then involves the other neurons also. So what happens in a seizure that there is a long-lasting depolarization due to extracellular
calcium influx and this calcium influx opens the sodium channels and that leads to repetitive action potential and this is followed by hyperpolarization what happens that GABA or the potassium channels that produce GABA is produced that produces the spike discharges so what is the cause of these repetitive discharges in epileptic seizure number one there is increased extracellular potassium which blunts the hyperpolarization and depolarizes the neighboring neurons number two increased calcium in the presynaptic terminals leads to increased neurotransmitter release and number three activation of NMDA receptor increases the calcium influx and neuronal activation what is the mechanism of neural neuronal excitation there are two mechanisms for neuronal excitation in epilepsy intrinsic and extrinsic intrinsic is the ion channel receptor and the second messenger and extrinsic to the neuron are include changes in neurotransmitter modulation of receptors as i already told in glutamate uh, discussion that accidental ingestion of domoic acid which is a agonist of the glutamate and glutamate is the excitatory transmitter that causes profound seizures via direct activation of excitatory receptors all over the brain number two penicillin lowers the seizure threshold how does it lower the seizure threshold penicillin it's by antagonizes the GABA you see the brain functioning it depends on the normal levels of glutamine glutamine glutamate and GABA glutamate is excitatory and GABA is inhibitory if the balance is lost abnormalities occur so it's the penicillin that causes decrease in GABA and how does the absence seizure occur normally generalized spike and wave discharges are related to oscillatory rhythms that are generated during sleep by circuits so there are circuits connecting thalamus and cortex this oscillatory behavior involves interaction between GABA calcium and potassium channels located in the thalamus and the receptor modulation of these channels induces the absence seizure another cause is that in many patients with MTLE syndrome they lose some specific neuron these are the neuron that inhibit the excitatory neurons in the dentate chirus if these neurons are lost there is reorganization or sprouting of surviving neurons in a way that affects the excitatory network and the inherited idiopathic epilepsies are due to mutations affecting the ions channel function and these are therefore associated with cardiac arrhythmias, episodic ataxia, periodic weakness, and familial hemiplegic migraine. Gene mutation in symptomatic epilepsies are associated with pathways affecting neuronal homeostasis. So how does the anti-epileptic drugs act? So what is the mechanism of action of anti-epileptics number one they inhibit the sodium channel dependent action potential number two they inhibit the calcium channel dependent action potential number three they decreases the glutamate release like lamotrigine that decreases the release of glutamate lamotrigine 
Number four, the increases GABA receptor function. That is valproic acid and GABA pentane. These are the drugs which increase the GABA receptor function. And you know, GABA increases the seizure threshold, whereas glutamate decreases that. The other drug, ethosacemide, and also the valproic acid. Valproic acid is the most effective drug for absence seizure. Act by inhibiting calcium channel in thalamic neurons.